and we go from a Chinese Olympic champion to Chinese world champions in the men's doubles. World number ones as well, of course. Xia Yun and Fu Haifang up against Shoji Sato and Naoki Kawamae. Well, it really is a terrific lineup, isn't it? You start with a reigning world and Olympic champion. Next match up, you've got four times world champions in men's doubles, current world number ones. Looking for the elusive gold medal at the Olympics later this year, because of course, four years ago, Tsai Yun and Fu Haifang were silver medalists lost out to Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan. Well, don't be alarmed, they dim the lights here to bring the players on in the spotlight. But for Sato and Kawamae, well, the top ranked Japanese pair now, but for a long time it was Hirata and Hashimoto. It's a rather ominous statistic as far as Japanese fans are concerned. The fact that this is the sixth meeting between these two pairs. And the Japanese pair have only won one game. Not one match, one game in the previous five encounters. Sayun and Fu Haifang, the world number ones. greeted with almost silence from the crowd the announcement of the Japanese pair Shoji Sato and Naoki Kawamae well this Japanese men's doubles pair an interesting combination because I seem to recall that two years ago Shoji Sato played third men's singles in Japan's Thomas Cup campaign and in fact in the group stage broke Malaysian hearts in Kuala Lumpur because he beat Mohamed Hafiz Hashim for Japan to defeat the host Malaysia 3-2 in the last of the group matches there he is the 29 year old from Tokyo winner of 14 singles titles nine of them back in 2003 and now solely concentrating on men's levels They've achieved virtually everything there is to achieve in the sport. Quite possibly the most feared pair in men's doubles for at least uh, eight years, possibly even longer. First of their world titles, of course, back in 2006 in Madrid. hitter in the sport holds the record for the fastest smash in competition play 332 kilometers an hour but look at that win-loss record for the year 12 and 1 has to be said they've only played two tournaments two finals one title Tai Yun 
32 years of age and almost certainly will be retiring after the Olympic Games. Well, for the Chinese number one pair in the group had to play against England's Adcock and Ellis. And it was a tough old encounter. But I suppose the significance so far is the fact that they haven't dropped a game. All of their matches in two straight. For the Japanese pair, well, didn't have to contest the quarter final. as they weren't selected. That seemed a, a strange decision at the time. Number one pair, not selected for the quarterfinal encounter against Indonesia, but obviously came through anyway, otherwise they wouldn't be here in today's semi-final. Those were both group matches. There's Park Dubon on the right as we look at them. And the only Manaki. Brother, of course, of former Olympic men's doubles champion, Brexy. Yeah, well, that's what I was talking about. This is the sixth meeting. The last time they met was in the first round of the Denmark Open last year. But I suppose, Dean, it's an indication of how much they've gone up the world rankings. And the fact that they weren't seeded at the Denmark Open. Now the number 11 pair in the world. There's our umpire, Ian Spear from England. Girish Natu of India is our service judge. Court officials from all around the world to ensure impartial officiating Play. Well, he was a hero for Japan two years ago. I think it's a bit of a tougher order today, though. So do you start up. He's a player that's made the transition from singles into men's doubles and is now playing a lot of mixed doubles as well. Very quick athlete. And a good start by the Japanese pair. Two, love. I remember I was quite puzzled when he, uh, after the Olympics in uh, Beijing, started playing men's doubles and played some lower ranked tournaments in Europe. Definitely developed into a competitive pair. Oh, that's very nice. One of the reasons he was chosen to play the men's doubles was exactly his speed. Well, the line judge slightly slow to make the call, but I think probably the right decision made in the end. question that one that was definitely long Two, 
Well, of course, I suppose it's the coach's dilemma all over the world, and as far as other men's doubles pairs are concerned, most haven't found the answer. How do you beat this top Chinese pair? That's well, very difficult. Efficient flick serve here from, uh, from Fu Haifeng. And uh, that's one of the players where I wish the umpires would review his uh, serving technique because to me, it isn't exactly according to the rules. What do you think, a little high? Uh, or flat? His racket doesn't point downwards. In fact, it points upwards when he hits the shuttle. Um, yeah, but to beat Fu and Kai, it's, uh, it's really, really difficult. It's a little bit like Lin Dan. They've won so much, so um, at sometimes you can catch them a little bit off guard. Or if Fu Haifeng is having problems with his shoulder. Uh, a lot of um, the Chinese strength comes from the threat that, that um, Fu Haifeng represents the world's hardest smasher. And not only are they hard, they are also with a very, very good angle on, and he's burying them. And that sort of sets up the kill for Chai Yun, who's very fast and quick on the front court. So if you have a def defense that can withstand the smashes of uh, Fu Haifang and uh, challenge Chai Yun at the net, then you have a, you have a chance, but uh, at the moment it's only uh, Lee Yong Dae and uh, Jung Jae Song, in my opinion. Yes, of course, that particular Korean pair beats this Chinese combination in the All England final this year, and it was an absolute thriller. It's interesting you talk about. Fu Haifeng's shoulder, because I noticed on the early stages of this Thomas Cup that Fu Haifeng had got his elbow heavily strapped. We didn't see any strapping on it in the quarterfinals, and he hasn't got any strapping on his arm either today. So presumably any concerns he had about his arm is Gao Ling, twice Olympic champion in the mixed doubles. Oh. This time the flick serve from Taiyun. Brilliant. This review that I'm so rooting for would probably also reveal that it is in fact possible to make really, really good flick serves without breaking the service rules. And sometimes it's just automatically that when there's a flick and it looks really, really flat, then it's a service fault. Yes, of course, there's several rules about the serve in badminton. One of them is that the shuttle must be struck below the waist and the racket must be pointing in a downward direction. You're not allowed to move your feet. You're not allowed to strike the feathers first. It's all highly complicated, which is why we have a dedicated service judge to every match. And one responsibility to keep an eagle eye on the serve. Very sharp at the net, Fu Hai Feng. Normally expect to see his partner in the front court position. When they started playing as a pair, Fu and Kai, Fu was actually not that good at the net. 
So if you could switch them around, you had a really good opportunity. But he's improved a lot, and that makes it much harder to, to target him at the net. Oh, service fault called. There we go. Yorish Natu of India. Just indicating to the player that the racket wasn't pointing in a downward direction. just by the gestures there. There was obviously something about intercepting at the net. I don't know whether it was about getting it past the Chinese players or that they had to hunt the shuttle more. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, rally started with that excellent low serve. Force the Japanese pair to lift the shuttle. And from that moment on, there was only one outcome. We've been talking a lot about the uh, attacking capabilities of the Chinese pair, but of course they also have an excellent defense because that's a prerequisite in, in top men's doubles. You can't play without defense unless your name is uh, Kido and Sechuan, who are not that strong in defense, but um, really, really good in the service situation. And these two pairs met each other at the Olympics, and the service situation was the deciding factor. Um, so, so even though you get the attack against Fu and Kai, you're not sure to win because they have an excellent defense. So you must be able to work really, really hard. Maintain the control of the rally. Japanese Uber Cup team down in force tonight to support the men. Of course, Japan lost their Uber Cup semi-final 3-0 to Korea. Well, I suppose that's one of the big differences between these two pairs because the Japanese just getting the shuttle back but unable to really do anything with it and there was so much attacking play from the Chinese that in the end you felt it was inevitable they were going to get the shuttle on the floor. Chinese mixed doubles combination that is sort of has the same setup. A very, very strong male player, very hard hitting male player, and then an excellent female player at the net. Excellent anticipation abilities. And that you, you have a you have a fairly easy task as a net player if you have the player with the hardest smash in the world behind you. You get some good chances. Yeah, 
very much take your point about defensive play because what did that need? Four smashes? Yeah. Well, the Japanese actually managed to finish off the rally. And four clever smashes, Mr. Person. They weren't, they weren't that hard, but they were steep. Yeah. And they kept their balance after smashing so they could help each other covering the front court. Yeah, good involvement of both players. Good rotational play. No, we've narrowed the gap to just one point. And Tian Lingyi looking a little bit concerned. Well, the Japanese pair in the wrong formation, well spotted by the umpire and Spear. coaching chair showing with uh, movements of his hands how he wanted that defense to be played instead One more of a block and smashes where the Chinese are in really good position that's it block it In the corner of the screen, we could just see him urging on his players. That's the right thing you're doing, guys. Block it and be ready for the next shot. If you don't give them any angle, their only choice is to block it back and you'll be able to lift again. Great match this has turned out to be. They they uh, fit each other so nicely. These two pairings. Yes, I couldn't help but think as the rally was in progress, what lovely movement and interchanges between the two Japanese players. One moves out, the other moves forward, and then one's out of position. The other compensates by adjusting their position on court. Great yeah. understanding. Yeah, and they they, uh, they they use their speed in a positive way. One point in it. Oh, dear me. Just when they seem to be on a little run of points. The error on the serve from Shoji Sato. Again, we see that when Fu Haifang is uh, firing away his smashes, the Japanese players block it. And move forward. And Important. move forward. Yeah. And not giving Chai Yun anything to work with. No, he doesn't show much emotion, does he? Japanese manager. Former top singles player, wasn't he? I'm not 
Nacho. Oh, it's just wide. I think actually it could be a good idea uh, to, if he, if he could give his serve a little bit more speed because uh, Chayun always moves very fast towards the net and, uh, and tries to play it uh, just to play a block straight over the net. So a little bit more speed would make it harder for him to judge how much he should apply. That was in. Yeah. Once again, they narrow the gap to just one solitary point. Yeah, clearly in. Dubong urging his men on, still giving instruction. Yeah, they're back level. Dare to believe that they can win this match or that they can beat China. One match at a time. I was thinking about the whole tie. Should they take this match one all? They have a good chance in the second men's doubles. A lot of pressure on Chen Long. Yeah, and of course, Kanichi Targo who's playing against Chen Long at second men's singles has beaten him on a couple of occasions. But let's not get ahead of ourselves because in the pressure situation, the Chinese have come out on top on that rally and it means they have game points. And now the service judge really has to be alert. Pushed it wide. The game point is squandered. Oh my goodness, is that quick or what? Play. Extraordinary. Moving back and forth from left to right at the net like he was remotely controlled. Now, game point to Japan. Oh, my goodness. Well, that was a lot, lot easier than the previous one. Well, nerves undoubtedly playing their part. Twenty-one all. Sato to his partner to leave the shuttle at the back of the court and Kawamae decided at the last moment that his partner was wrong and he had to try and play it and by then it was just far too late well it's all happening here second game point opportunity for China Saved by Jayun. Yeah, some very, very positive play by the Japanese combination. And I like that they keep the attack on one person. I don't think Chayun is particularly weak in the defense, but just so that your partner knows where you're going to hit it. It could have been Kai, uh, Fu Haifeng, but keep it on one. Well, what did you say about Taiyun and the fact that he always wants to play that net shot reply of the low serve? Well, he does it again. 
And again, trying to have game point. Unbelievable. What an interception. Look at the height he gets before he plays the shot. Remarkable. All level once again. Excellent play by the Chinese here. Really giving away no chances to the Japanese players. Super follow up. By Chai Yun. Game point number four. Champions convert, but my goodness, didn't they have to work hard for that opening game? 25-23. And badminton of the very, very highest quality. Fantastic match so far. Really, really enjoyable. And especially this guy at the net, the small Shoji Sato from Japan. Dominance at the net. I'd be very interested to know how many of those ten winners came from Taiyun. Well, I don't know about the players, but I feel exhausted. <laughs> Excitement's all getting to me. And even though China has won the first three games in this match, it, ha it has turned out much more even than at least I would have expected. And that's just nice. Yeah. All credit to the Japanese players. second game is half as good as the first we're in for a treat well not a bad return of serve was it you must have been watching Jonas Rasmussen on videotape exactly the same deception yeah nicely done Two. Well, Steam picking up on the point that you've just been talking about that all three games that we've seen so far, in other words, the two games of the men's singles and the first game of this men's doubles, have been a lot closer than you would have imagined or thought prior to the start of this contest. So 
another good running again. Yeah, very, very good. I was talking to one of our colleagues from the Malaysian written press earlier today. And she was saying, what do you love about the sport? What do you look for in players? And I said, well, it's the players who can really respond in the pressure situations. Japan came into this semi-final under real pressure. I think I said that they were up against it. It was a tall order. But my goodness, haven't they responded so well? They've really brought out the best in their players and no sign of nervousness or fatigue or anything. Just giving everything they've got. And we sort of would have expected them to, but we weren't aware that they were they were having so much to give. Yeah. And if I were Fuunkai, I wouldn't be looking forward to meeting these Japanese players in the first round of the knockout stage at the Olympics. Three, that was for trouble. One. Yes, highly dangerous pair. Looks like uh, Fu and uh, Kai are a little uh, content with um, having won the first game and uh, needs a couple of rallies to sort of get their game together again. At least uh, the Japanese taking the lead here in the second game. Yes, and they may have lost that rally, but I have to say, you know, it, it displays such good character, doesn't it? The fact that the Japanese pair so close in that opening game, in fact, had a game point themselves. They lose the opening game, and yet immediately back, full focus, full attention, full effort. It'd be awfully easy to be a little bit despondent after such a close opening game. Not a bit of it. Oh, that's a good low serve. It could be nice to have some slow motion close ups of these services. We have the cameras to do it. Instead, we have a picture of Jung Jun, himself a really a hard hitter in the mixed doubles. service situation Five, you can try four. keeping an eye on the arm that is holding the shuttle when the service is being delivered often it's almost <laughs> vertical horizontal horizontal sorry No, I don't think that was the wisest choice of defensive shot. Playing cross court and the left hand is at the net. Oh my goodness. attack from uh, the world champions and they get a little extra speed in their attack standing in that end
play. Hu Haifang burying his attack here with a tight drop shot. Well, Japanese don't like the call, and I have to say my instinct was I have sympathy for them. Well, the umpire, Ian Spear, saying I couldn't see. Well, it certainly wasn't lengthwise. We won't see from that shot whether it was out the side of the court or not. Of course... Just to reiterate, the umpire can only overrule a line judge if he sees that a clear error has been made and at the far side of the court to where the umpire sits and it's as close as that, you can't possibly make an overrule. Fung missing that last attempted kill. But I do sense, Dean, that the last three or four rallies, Chinese pair have upped the intensity and more attacking play. They've dominated. And just picked up a hand signal from Sato with the service, but um, still in the middle of the court. And I would think it's quite important if he was able to Wary his serve a little bit. Oh! Well, it's another tremendous rally. And the margins between success and failure at this level, absolutely tiny. There's the rotational play. Again, a great example of that. I'm not entirely sure I'm right, but I think the Chinese might have changed their defense a little bit. So instead of trying a high defense, they also have tried to lower their defense a bit. So it's not so easy uh, for the Japanese to get these lethal angles on their shot. Service hold called. Oof, goodness, I but I'm not convinced there's a service fault here. Well, when he first fell over, I thought he just slipped, and then when I saw it again, it looked a little more serious than at first I'd realised, but doesn't seem to have been any lasting damage. The last thing we need is another injury. Of course, world number one in the men's singles, Lee Chong Wai. Badly twisted an ankle against Peter Gader in a group match, and certainly all of us here wish him a speedy recovery. Nine, ten.
great shot from Fu Hai Fang, but unfortunately for him, it went too high. the crowd, doesn't it, when the Japanese pair are in the lead? Very tight contest so far. Oh, dear me. Well, the break. Not helping the Japanese pair after that run of four straight points from 7 10 adrift. and steady work here from the Japanese. shift in the chair there from Lee Yongbo. reactions at the net, uh, Chayun. How much of it is reaction speed and how much is reading what's going to happen? A lot of both, I guess. Yeah, I think so. It's gone well wide. I think it's a good idea as a net player to practice doing things in uh, higher speed that you would normally experience in the games. That's the only way of pushing yourself.
Well, both the Chinese players hovering around the net area, both ready and looking to pounce. In contrast, the Japanese pair pushed so deep in their defensive stances. Well taken from Kawa Maye. Just long. Well, talk about Kai Yun being fast at the net. Sato isn't that far behind, I can assure you. Very, very quick. Just mistimed it. I liked everything about that rally except the last shot. Pushing it past Chayun on the service return to Fu Haifeng. Keeping the attack, but then a little bit of accuracy. A little bit of speed lacking for Kalame. Oh. Well, he may be 32 years of age, but he certainly hasn't slowed down at all, has he? As far as that is concerned, he's really stepping up right now. He's the captain of the Chinese team. Is yep. that right? That's right. Always the leader in uh, 15, cheering up his teammates and getting them together before the match. Yeah, a very experienced athlete. And a very popular, not just player, but very popular within the team. Three point cushion now. Chinese combination. Good serve again. Mm. That's wild from Fu Hai Fung. He's, he's fallen a little bit behind in the in the soft game the last five or six rallies, but Chai Yun has stepped up. This is the real experience of the pair, isn't it? Stepping up the pace at exactly the right moment. Now just two points away from victory. gone wide took the interception a little too late it did Sato well 
I seem to remember this scoreline in the opening game. 19, match point, 17. Three match points. Now, the Yun and Fu Haifang. Hit the top of the tape but fell back the Chinese side. Still match point to China. This time they convert second match point opportunity and a second point in the semi-final tie for China. 25-23, 21-18. Well, they were always favourites with the world champions to take this men's doubles. Number one pair in the world. But my goodness, what a great fight a Japanese number one pair put up. 274, that final smash. Has hit one at 290 this week. And their confirmation that after 49 minutes, Taiyun and Fu Haifang. Take the first men's doubles, 25-23, 21-18. And they really did build the rallies so well, and I think the indication of that is the fact that they hit so many winners from the front of the court. Very, very difficult, as Dean Peterson was saying earlier. They hit winners from the back. Quality of defence nowadays in men's doubles. Is absolutely superb, but it wasn't a defensive game, it was all about the attack. Well, that confirms that China are two love up in this semi-final tie against Japan. Both of those first two matches in two straight games. 